Hi, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about the two laws of coding that I've learned during my PhD journey. So I've spent a few years learning how to code over my academic career and definitely at the beginning I found coding really really hard especially because I come from physics and I think theoretical physics at the beginning at least when I was studying wasn't really doing much coding so the first project I had to make I still remember really vividly was this project in C++ trying to code up the three body problem and for me it really seemed like magic and I didn't know where to start or how people learned the syntax or how people came up with good solutions to these kind of problems and I think today this has actually changed a lot nowadays people can just learn how to code online and I think actually you don't really need to go to university to learn how to code most programmers that i know and really respect that are super good programmers they've mostly learned it by themselves by trying to work on their own type of projects so the first thing i always encourage people that want to learn how to program to do is to program through project-based learning and i talk about this before but i think project-based learning is truly the only way to learn how to code and that's because when you take a course for example on coursera you mostly learn the syntax but you will stay quite beginner if you only stick to learning through these courses and that's because learning how to program is not only learning the language of programming but also the thinking of programming and the thinking of programming in my regard is a bit more similar to how for example a scientist works or how an engineer works so you get a novel problem and you really try to think through first principles to the solution and i think this type of skill you cannot really learn unless you work through problems yourself and on top of that just what i've seen is that when people pick projects that they actually truly enjoy and find really important they just spend a lot more time trying to work through these problems so one way you can learn python for example is through this course called 100 days to code and this is not sponsored or anything but i truly enjoy this course and i think it's a really good way to learn python because every day you work through a different problem set and at the end of the course you will work through your own projects and this is really a projects based uh, learning tool another thing you can do is to explore cackle competitions i know a lot of people really enjoy these type of competitions and you can definitely get a lot of experience out of it and lastly you can also of course start on code academy they have a lot of these smaller projects that you can work on but again i would definitely recommend you to try to think of your own projects as well so for example one of the first projects that i built was this pomodoro timer because i personally use pomodoro timers a lot but i wanted one with a cuter background and another one was this like financial app that like kind of tracked my finances because i thought that would be super useful so something else that i've enjoyed is that a lot of programmers are on Twitter and they kind of show their work there and what they do is these small 30 day challenges so I would definitely also recommend to follow some of your favorite programmers on Twitter and kind of see what they're up to because I think these challenges of trying to finish a project in 30 days really work at least for me to motivate myself to try to finish something to the best of my capabilities and that kind of brings me to the second point and that's to really truly embrace failure and to embrace the uncertainty that you will feel through coding. So I definitely know at the beginning when I started to learn how to code I mostly took courses and that's kind of because they felt more safe and that's especially because there were some answers online on how to solve different problems but in the real world if you're trying to learn how to be a programmer or you want to work on some code for your PhD there are no solutions for your problems and I think actually through the struggle of trying to find a solution or come up with your own solution you will become a much better programmer but the fact of the matter is that that sometimes for me for example it takes almost three months to come up with a good clear solution to a project or to a problem that I'm working on and I think this struggle you cannot really learn unless you go through it yourself but the patience you learn through working through projects and kind of embracing the uncertainty and the failure is definitely something that I think is very valuable and that most programmers that I know that are really good programmers have. So for example, a lot of my friends are working on deep learning problems right now and these different type of autoencoders. And I know one of my friends has spent almost two years trying to optimize an autoencoder to work as she wanted to. 
And I think if you start programming, you probably cannot even imagine working on the same project for two years. But if you slowly build up your patience with failure and your capability to understand uncertainty, you will be able to make these larger projects and also probably publish it maybe at a certain time or work at a company that needs you to be able to work on these larger type of problems. So this was a super short video, but if you have any tips for me on how you improved your coding or what kind of courses online you enjoyed, I would love to know. So please put it down in the comments below. And next week, I want to make a video on how to write a paper a lot faster, because that's something that I'm working on currently. So if you have any questions towards that, also let me know. And otherwise, see you next week. Bye.